Alexa, what time is it? The time is 6.30 p.m. All right. Looks like we're on time. Is everybody arriving? Do we have our guests yet? No, we do have a few. Okay, good. Thank you everybody for joining us today. We will go ahead and get started. Um, if you're not familiar with Zoom, we are. it lets us all chat and use video to communicate. Um, and we do want everybody to participate and give us um, questions or any feedback that you have as we go along. Um, if you would like to raise your hand so that we can unmute you and allow you to speak, uh, please press Alt-Y if you're on a PC or Command-Y if you're on a Mac, or if you're dialing in from your phone, press star nine. If you are uh, muted and we, are, we ask you to unmute yourself, go ahead and press star six to unmute on the phone or Alt-A on a PC, command A on a Mac. Um, you can also type in questions in the chat room, which is available with Alt H on a PC, command H on a Mac, and sadly you cannot type questions on your phone. I don't know how that would work. Um, today we're going to be talking about smart speakers and smart homes for smart people. Um, there's several different options out there for smart speakers. Um, there's several different assistants that work behind the scenes to make those smart speakers work. Um, and you can use those devices or your phone to control all kinds of appliances and gadgets around your house. Um, we are going to talk about our experiences uh, using those tools um, and the accessibility. Uh, before we really kick it off, I'd like to say thank you to um, Northwest Hills Eye Care um, for inviting us to speak to all of their uh, friends and uh, clients. Um, today with me, my name is Thomas Stivers, by the way. I sort of forget because we've done several of these, but not everybody knows all the names. Um, presenting with me, I have um, Dan Hart, who is our data accessibility specialist at the Austin Lighthouse. I have um, Aaron Hoffman, who is our lead adaptive technology instructor. We have Bailey Alger, who's another adaptive technology instructor. And we have Taryn Trever, um, who is our store manager. Um, another adaptive technology instructor that works with us who may be joining us, he's having, I think, maybe some technical difficulties, is Eric Zafuentes. Um, so he may step in a little bit later uh, in the evening. Um, we'll, we'll go ahead and get started with sort of what, what is a smart speaker and, and what does it do? What are we talking about? Um, typically they come in, in three sort of flavors. You've got the Amazon Echo devices, um, which use the Alexa um, AI assistant. You've got the Google Home Sorry, devices. I don't know that. Ah, there Would she is. Would you like to hear a few things I can do? No. These smart speakers are very sensitive to hearing their wake word. So that's what happened when I said um, the word. Let me turn it off. When I said the word Alexa, she woke up and was ready to answer my questions. Um, there's also the Google Home, which is powered by the Google Assistant, also available on phones uh, that run Android. And finally, there's uh, the Apple Smart or Apple HomePod, which is powered by uh, good old Siri, which is on everybody's iPhone. If you have an iPhone, 
<laughs> I kind of get, get to where I think everybody does. Um, probably the most common or most popular smart speaker is uh, the Amazon Echo. Um, its wake word is Alexa. I have mine disabled right now. Um, it's been around the longest and it is in a lot of different devices. The Alexa Assistant is in many different things. Um, there's the smart, the speakers, um, there are smart video displays. So you can have Alexa built into your TV. You can get small um, tablet like devices that can be set maybe on a kitchen counter so you can use them to refer to recipes and so forth. But they're not like a traditional tablet because they're plugged in and so they're ready and and have information on the screen all the time so you can take a glance at it uh, for me that's not really important i don't have any of the um, alexa devices with a screen but i do have four echo dots which are pretty small um, and inexpensive i think when i bought them i got three of them for about 20 bucks each um, when they were on sale. Um, and I have those in rooms all over my house so that wherever I am, I can um, set timers, set alarms, ask for the time, the weather, all kinds of things. Alexa, set an alarm for 7.30 p.m. Alarm set for 7.30 p.m. Alexa, what's on my calendar? Here are the next four events. On Saturday, August 15th, at 10.30 a.m., there's National Federation of the Blind of Texas Austin Chapter Virtual Meeting Invitation and Information. At 10.30 a.m., there's National Federation of the Blind of Texas Austin Chapter Virtual Alexa, Meeting Alexa, stop. And so it will go through all of my calendar events, whatever they might be. Um, I could do so many things with Oh, there's, uh, there's Google trying to get in on the action because I said something that sounded a little bit like it's wake word. Um, but I'm not going to cover Google, so stay quiet. Um, in addition to the speakers and, um, and sort of tab or monitors, there you, the Alexa, um, Assistant is available in an app on an Android phone or on an iPhone. So you There's can really I use it from everywhere. Apps are usually available through an app store for that platform. Alexa, stop. And whenever you talk about it on a webinar, it speaks up all the time. Lots of fun. Um, So I really, I like the Echo Dots quite a bit. They're, they're cheap, they're small, you can put them anywhere, uh, you can move them around. Um, the larger Echo um, is a little bit taller. That it's, it looks kind of like a coffee can, um, or at least it's that size. Uh, it sounds a lot better than the Dots, um, but it, the price, it's about, it can be $79 to $100, just depending on sales and so forth. Um, I don't know if it's worth the difference, but it, it fills up a big room a little better than the dot does. Um, also, there are headphones from Bose and speakers from Bose and Sonos that have Alexa built in. Um, those brands are too high priced for me, but if you really like good quality sound, uh, they're a good option. Uh, next, uh, Dan is going to speak to us a little bit about the Google Home and the Google Assistant. Uh, Dan, can you speak up about uh, Google? Maybe Dan's here. Can you hear me now? There you are. Okay. I'm using the space bar to unmute me, so I hit something else first. Huh. So good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Dan Hart, and yes, I'm going to go over some of the different things that you can do with the uh, Google Home, uh, as well as with the Google Assistant. Um, I will assure you that for those of you that were with us a couple weeks, well, actually a couple of webinars ago, 
yes, my Google is actually awake this time. So, um, <laughs> the just like the Echoes, the Google comes in a variety of different uh, devices. I actually have the Google Home Mini here with me. The sound quality is very nice on it. I also have three of the Echo Dots and two of the uh, standard Echoes. Uh, I kind of bounce back and forth between the two, just depending on how I'm interacting or what I'm interacting with. Uh, so you have the Google Home Mini, you have the standard Google Home. Again, you get a little bit more uh, sound quality, a little bit louder speaker out of it. Between the, the Echo Dot and the Google Home Mini, they're pretty close. Like, like sound quality wise, I think I give a slight edge to the Google Home Mini, but um, uh, the nice thing about the, both the Google Home Mini as well as the uh, the Echo Dot is you can actually run them from a USB power bank. If the actually mine's running off a USB power bank right now, it's got a. They both take a, a micro USB on the uh, device, USB to going out to your to your power brick if you like. So that's one nice thing about the Minis. Uh, jumping up to the Google Home Max, there you're getting a nice good quality speaker lots louder and uh, really gives you some good rich uh, sound quality as with everything the Google uh, the Google Home Mini about 20 to 30 dollars and I think the Google Max goes up for it's about a hundred hundred and twenty dollars in that area maybe you can sometimes catch them on sale a really good time to get these devices on sale is right around Black Friday I see these things go on sale all the time uh, so one nice thing that I do like about the Google Home is I've got my phone sitting right next to me, and when I give it the wake word, you'll hear two different tones, but everything that you're gonna hear goes off of the uh, Google Home Mini. So the Google Home Mini kind of takes over. I've got both of them on my devices, on my, on my home Wi-Fi, and it's really nice because it'll also interact with your phone. Okay, Google, good evening. Good evening, how can I help you? What's the weather like? Currently in Taylor, it's 99 and partly cloudy. The forecast tonight is for a high of 98 and a low of 79 and partly cloudy. Due to the current humidity, it feels like it's 106. Okay, Google. What's the nearest Mexican food restaurant? Mariachi's de Jalisco is on 3100N Main Street in Taylor. A lot of places have changed their hours and services temporarily, so you might want to check with them. Okay, Google. Navigate to the nearest Mexican food restaurant. You can see the full route on your phone. Now, the nice thing about this is I can go into my phone and I can go into my notifications and tap on the notifications and it's already got Google Maps open and it's and all I have to do is tell it to navigate and now I'm ready to hop in the car with my family or maybe start walking and uh, it, it'll actually navigate me over there to the uh, to the uh, to the restaurant there you can also with both the uh, Alexa as well as the Google homes you can tie in your Spotify account Pandora of course, Google Music on, on the Google Homes, on the Echoes, you can tie in your Amazon Music, uh, Prime Music if you like. Okay, Google, play a song by Mercy Me. All right, here's Mercy Me on Spotify. Okay, Google, cancel. So you can see right there that it's tied into my Spotify account and I already know some of the different songs and some of the artists that I have on my Spotify account and it ties in very, very nicely to give you good uh, hands-free uh, playback. Everything that I'm doing here with this Google Home, I could also do with the, the same Google Assistant on my phone. So that's the nice thing about the Google ecosystem is that if you're on the Android ecosystem, the AI that's in your phone is going to be the same AI that's in your uh, Google uh, your Google Home speaker as well. Um, with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn it over to Mr. Bailey, 
who is going to go ahead and talk about uh, Siri and HomeKit. Bailey, take it away. Hello. Um, so today, I am just going to be showing you um, that a lot of these functionalities that these smart speakers provide you, a lot of you might actually have in your pocket already, because um, what, what you probably have picked up on by now is that Siri is just, um, is just a, is just the same as them. Um, it's just the same as Alexa, it's just the same as, uh, as Google Assistant. Um, except, you know, you can do it right from your phone. And it's generally pretty easy. Um, you, you do have a wake word on this. Um, I don't have it set up currently, but it's, it would be, hey Siri. But the way most of you know, probably is you would hold either the home button or on the newer phones that don't have one, the lock button, and Siri would come up. So let's try something. Because I'm a movie nerd, let's say I wanted to go watch Netflix. So I would go open Netflix. And now, oh, I, had, I don't have my voiceover speech on. And now, it's in my list of Netflix profiles. But if I was feeling like maybe I would rather, I don't know, listen to music, I could tell Spotify to play some sort of song. I could tell it to play music directly. I could tell it to even search things on YouTube and it would bring that up too. Um, but what I generally use it for is finding nearest stores because I like to get out. I like to explore places and generally that's at a place where I can buy things. So um, for example, the other day I had to go to Home Depot and get some shelves. So when I did that, I, I went, where is the nearest Home Depot? The nearest one I found is the Home Depot on South I-35 Frontage Road. Do you want that one? Yes. Great. I can call that location or get directions. Which would you like? And then you would tell it, you know, if you want directions, if you want, um, if you want, you know, if you want to call there to see if they're open, especially now with the pandemic. And you can do all of these things just by, um, just by holding, just by asking Siri, just by waking up Siri, just by holding that button. And I don't own one, but it, there also is a partner speaker that could go along with it that's called a HomePod. And um, it works very similar to to the others, and probably meshes the best with Apple devices, and lets you do a lot of the same things. It's just in the Apple setup, and that's about what I have uh, for my section. So I'm going to pass it on. Thank you. Right. Cool. Thank you, Bailey. I'm really excited. Um, one of my former co-workers, who is an extreme Apple enthusiast, uh, dare I say fanboy, has joined us, Michael Doyce. Um, and I'm kind of hoping that he has a HomePod, because none of us in the group have one, um, and might be able to say a few words about what it does that might sort of be um, unique or special to it. Mike, are you, are you in a position where you could uh, could chime in? Can y'all hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, as you knew, yes, I have a HomePod. Actually, we have three of them. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> One we got by accident, but uh, we, we have three as, as it is. So. One of the neat things you can do is you can pair these things up uh, together and make a stereo pair. So you have a stereo speaker set, which sounds really amazing. And they do really cool things, but I always tell people you buy it because you want good sounding speakers, not because you want the, uh, the smart assistant, because uh, as I like to call her, you get more with a lady 
and that's for uh, you know the echoes and google assistant are much more powerful assistants but the neat thing is is that the home pods can run shortcuts from the iphone and um and from the uh, ipad and things like that so it's pretty pretty powerful you get good sound and the snoring you hear in the background is a guide dog so uh, not a person <laughs> Um, but you do get um, some amazing um, sound. You get all the power of Siri. And the neat thing is it does work with your smart, uh, your smart home. So you could tell your lights to, like, um, if you have smart lights, and I don't know if y'all are planning to get to this later, but if you have smart lights, you could tell Siri to turn, turn on and off your lights and those kind of things. And um, to, uh, you know, I think you could even do what um, Dan did with um, – uh, Apple Maps, but with uh, or what you did with Google Maps with Apple Maps with the HomePod mm -hmm. and have it plan your route before you even head out to your car. And I think it probably works with CarPlay and all that kind of stuff, too. I haven't played with that, but um, I do use the HomePods a lot to mainly listen to music. And soon they're going to get support for Spotify and go beyond just Apple Music and maybe even Audible, which will make me very happy. So that's kind of the kind of the gist for HomePods there. So it sounds like Thank one of the you. really cool features of, of like the home pods or of the um, Google home that Dan spoke about is that they really work closely with your phone. Um, you both were mm -hmm. mentioning that you can send things directly to maps. Um, I don't think that works quite as seamlessly with um, the echoes. So if you really no. want something that's tied in closely with your phone, that's something to think about is, um, one of the, the Google or the Apple device would work a little more closely with your phone. Hey, Thomas. Can I yes, sir. Real quick with something? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, sorry, my phone's starting to go nuts. Um, Mike brought up a good point. By the way, Mike, it's good to hear your voice there. Uh, glad, uh, very happy to have you over here. Um, yeah. Mike brings up a good point about tethering your devices together. I know you can do that with the uh, Echo devices. You can create speaker groups. And you can also, I believe you can also do that with the uh, Google Home uh, products as well. I've not, since I only have the one product, I haven't actually done it. But uh, that feature is really, really nice. And then um, the other thing that I've also done with my Echoes is when I've created a group like that, I'll actually make a, a housewide announcement. Hey kids, come to come downstairs for dinner and it announces it on every single echo that we have in the house. So no matter where the kids are, my wife is or whatever, then yeah, the announcements go, go straight, uh, straight to everybody. So that's a neat little feature too. Yes, I'm buying me some smart speakers. <laughs> that's right, that it makes a nice, <laughs> a nice way to have a quick intercom. Um, <laughs> So now we've talked about the speakers themselves, but uh, they can only do so much by themselves. There's a lot of other devices you can get, and Michael uh, touched on it a bit um, with smart lights and smart just about everything else. Um, personally, I don't have any smart lights. Um, my, my wife isn't that interested in them, and they would do me no good. Um, but that's, that's one of the most common ones is put smart light bulbs in every room, and then you can turn off and on lights one at a time or in groups just by saying it. So if you forgot to turn the kitchen light off and you're in bed already, you just yell at Alexa to do it and she'll take care of it. Um, there, the appliances and devices from different manufacturers will really work best together. Um, so if you've got a Maytag refrigerator, it may work best with a Maytag uh, washer and dryer set or oven, you know, where they're, it's, it's all designed to play really well together. Um, but if you have a smart speaker, it can be the hub that allows devices from different manufacturers to play together. Uh, so if you have a Roomba automated vacuum, um, it can um, sort of work with the same device that you control, um, say a GE automated refrigerator, which honestly automated refrigerator sounds a lot fancier than it is. <laughs> you can't, there's not that much you can do with a refrigerator without standing in front of it, but you know, they exist. 
Um, many of the smart home devices that we're talking about will have a logo on them that say what they work with specifically. They'll say works with Alexa, works with Google, or works with uh, HomeKit. HomeKit is specifically Apple's um, phrase for the devices that work really well with Siri and um, the HomePod. So, uh, oh, so was somebody? Was that yeah, that was, that was me, Thomas. I was just gonna kind of, kind of uh, add on with the works with Alexa. Um, I had an experience where I bought a, uh, it was a pretty pricey air conditioning system and it was a whole package and it was a, uh, you know, it comes with its own thermostat and everything. And it said, hey, this works with Alexa. Sorry, people, uh, didn't mean to say everybody's echoes off. Um, so you do want to be very, very careful and do do your due diligence and your research about, okay, how much does this interact with my device? Uh, my thermostat, I don't want to say the name of the company that I got, but uh, all I can realistically do with it is say, hey lady, what's the temperature? Uh, maybe in, it's supposed to be able to increase and decrease the, the temperature, but it does not actually. And that's because a third party made that particular uh, skill on the Echo platform. So mm -hmm. when you are purchasing anything and when it says, hey, it, it, it will work or it should, if it says it should work, definitely buyer beware. But if it does say it does work, still do your homework and make sure that, uh, that, that you know, read the different reviews, check out the skills or check out, you know, anything that you can on your device just to make sure that it's going to do exactly what, what you're looking for it to do. So one, one tip on that, um, when I said works with Alexa, um, I'm sort of saying that as a, buzz, uh, as a buzzword or a special phrase. I believe there is an icon that goes along with that phrase. And that is um, for devices certified by Amazon to work with Alexa. I think Google and Apple have a, a similar programs. Yes. Um, I wish I knew how to present those icons easily to people, but there is a, there is a sort of a way to know if it says works with Alexa trademark, basically um, that lets you know that it is certified to work and provide all of the smart functionality um, through Alexa. Or if it says home kit enabled is typically what you'll see uh, for Apple devices. Um, and I, I don't know if it just works with Google or if there's another uh, special phrase. A lot of devices will say uh, compatible with the Amazon Echo or compatible with Alexa, so forth. But uh, unless it has that sort of magic phrase, uh, like Dan said, buyer beware. Um, now we're going to go into a couple of different examples of some smart home devices. We all have, um, you know, or well, one or two different things that we've used. And I'm hoping that maybe during this roundtable discussion, if anybody has um, a device that they're using that they really like, um, maybe they can can raise their hand and will and, and speak a bit about how that works as far as accessibility. Um, right now, we've just taken accessibility as a given because for what I, from my experience, most of these things just kind of work out of the box. Some of the apps can be a little, a little um, complex to get, get going with, but most of them seem more or less accessible. Um, so I haven't gotten really focused on accessibility. Um, Taryn, can you speak about your experiences to get us started with this round table? So I have two things. Um, I don't have any home speakers, which I mentioned earlier. Want one now. Um, <laughs> I do have a thermostat that um, is, it doesn't, it, I think it says Alexa enabled, but we don't have, but I can operate it with an app on my phone and I can, it was kind of wonky today. I don't know what the story was with that. Um, but you can, you can change the temperature. I can even program it. Um, we have our set to uh, turn down at night because we sleep with it very cool. And in the day it's much warmer. And that's already a preset that we set up through the app. My husband has the app, I have the app. We can both control it. Um, or you can simply change the temperature during the day. You just wanna turn it up or down 
but it's kind of nice to be able to do that on my phone. That way I'm not walking to this little box on the wall and try and remember what button does what. And it does have a touch screen that operates, but we never use it, of course, because it's hard to read for my husband and impossible to read for me. And it only talks through my phone. But it's nice to have that capability. And this is the first time I've had it. We've had it for about, oh, I don't know, four months now. Um, and its app is what I would say fairly accessible. I, I think there's one or two unlabeled buttons, but for the most part, I can control it. Um, the other thing, and I wanna say it's an Ecopee. I think, Thomas, you mentioned that earlier. I think you may be right. That sounds terribly familiar. <laughs> I guess, you know, um, I just really didn't know for sure. But yeah, we got it when our solar panels got installed. And we also have an app for checking how um, much input from our solar panels we have that works, you know, similarly, but that's just input. It gives us just data, but that also is a, a smart thing we have. It's just a touchpad that works with the solar panels, monitors them, and then I can look at it via an app on my phone as well, which I have not yet downloaded that app. Um, so those are a couple of neat things that um, I don't use often, but can use and do have. I also have um, my alarm system is Simply Safe, and it is a completely, you have to plug in the base, but all of its sensors are wireless. Everything from our door sensors to our camera that goes with it to the panic button, they're all wireless. You can just uh, attach them to the wall where you, where you want, or if you're like us and decide that it's totally cool to leave the keypad for it laying on the front table where the cat walks across it about once a week. Um, <laughs> there's that. Um, that is also controllable with an app on the phone and that app is accessible. I can do everything I need to from that app. I can see when doors open or close or I can set the alarm um, or I can turn it off on the way home if I want to. Um, and the reason I like to talk about Simply Safe, and this is a tiny bit off topic, but as far as its monitoring fee, it's a lot lower price than some of the other things out there and it works great and it's accessible. My last alarm company, which I'm not going to say, but their app was not accessible and I, I really struggled with it and we paid more monthly to monitor it. And I was like, okay. So Simply Safe is a much cheaper and accessible option for those of you looking for that kind of thing. And we need those to get are really a sponsorship. Only, yeah, right. <laughs> those are the only two, uh, those are really the only devices I have at this time. I can kind of tie into that with you, Aaron, uh, Taryn. Um, so with our alarm system as well, uh, I won't go into my monitoring um, company, but I've had a couple of different alarm systems and they've both been built on the alarm.com uh, application platform. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alarm.com is, it's pretty accessible. Um, I haven't had any problems when I've had to use TalkBack. I've been able to arm disarm, again, looking at the different uh, activity going on most of my sensors are wireless. Uh, the existing wire system that I had when we moved into the house was wired, but all of that's tied up. We do have, like you, Taryn, we've got a, a little, pa a little like a little tablet downstairs, and it'll flash pictures and stuff. Oh yeah. I don't yeah. use it. I, I I can't see the uh, the tablet, um, and I don't see that the tablet there's any accessibility built into the tablet, but I can control everything from my phone. Um, the nice thing about this is kind of getting into some of the smart home devices. I do have a smoke detector that is uh, monitored. So if, a, if something goes off, I can see, oh, it's in, and I can even have multiples, one upstairs, one downstairs if I want, and it'll tell you which one went off first. Uh, again, it tells you the different windows that go off. I have my ring doorbell that I can go in through alarm.com with your alarm systems, anything that's Z-Wave or Zigbee Wave uh, compatible, that should be able to hook up to most alarm systems just fine. Funny story about monitored uh, smoke detectors. Uh, promised I would give this one. First get it, I'm sitting there making uh, stir fry and I got all this stuff going on in the, in, the, in the room. Steam's going off, of course, everything goes off the alarm company or the uh the alarm goes off everything so I, I don't have my phone with me i've got my daughter at the panel disarming the the fire alarm but who shows up the fire department so it <laughs> does work 
So from now on, it's always called, uh, we always call it uh, fire truck chow mein, or I think is what we finally named that dish. But it really, <laughs> it's really nice to have everything tied into that one app. Like you were saying too, Taryn, I've got my garage door opener. I have a separate app for that. Supposedly I can put it in, I can tie it in with my, uh, with my Google now. I haven't tried it yet. Oh, the door cool. locks, you can, you can tie in your door locks to your alarm.com as well. Like Mike and Thomas and Terrence said, you can also do your, your bulbs. You can get remote controls for your ceiling fans and the uh, various plugs around your house. So there's a lot of different options out there for you to do smart, quote unquote, smart home. Uh, it, it, you can really, you can really go wild. I'm excited to try out that recipe of adding uh, the foam to the chow mein to see how that works out. <laughs> it actually worked out pretty good. It tasted pretty good. And all the whole fire department said was, wow, smells good. I see you're good. Have a nice night. <laughs> <laughs> so those are kind of the, the a little more complicated systems with, um, with security systems. You can also just get smart plugs that will let you turn any device into a slightly smarter device. Um, if you have a fan that you want to be able to just turn on and off, uh, maybe from bed or from a chair, um, you can plug that regular old fan into a smart plug, hook it up to one of the, um, hook it up to Alexa or Google Home or whatever it might be, um, and control it with your voice. So that's a, that's a nice feature that's um, really simple to get started. Um, there are, as, as Mike alluded to earlier, there are light bulbs that you can um, get, which are smart. They have Wi-Fi right in the light bulb. You screw it into the socket, connect it, and it's, uh, get, it's good to go. Sometimes connecting these different pieces can be a little bit uh, challenging. Um, usually you have to do, go through some kind of process to get them onto your Wi-Fi network. Um, and that can be a little bit daunting. So we've covered a bunch of different topics um, and we can, we've got a couple more we can talk on, but um, does anybody have any, any questions or specific items that maybe they're using in their um, homes that they would like to tell us about? Don't everybody speak at once or raise your hand at once, shall I say? Oh, there's Mike. Uh, go ahead, Mike. Hey, guys. Um, so the, the bulbs that I use are the Philips Hue bulbs. And they have a, a little bridge that you hook up. So that's one thing to keep in mind that that has to be hooked into your router. So it's they do make some out there that you don't have to do that, but I, I feel like they're harder to set up, but the app, the last time I've used it was completely accessible. Um, and the neat thing is you can press a button to identify what bulb you're plugging in, which is very useful for when you move, like I just did. <laughs> and you can say, oh, that one says it's to the living room, but it's in the bedroom. Which one <laughs> is it? So those are all these things to keep in mind. Um, uh, we we have the Echo Shows uh, here, the, the the screen, and I just wanted to point out with that one of the neat features it has is it has a feature called Show and Tell, where you could put a can or some other food product in front of your Echo Show, and it will actually read you the recipe on how to make it, which is really neat. Oh, very cool. Very cool. You know, Mike, you, you bring up a good point there about having it tied into your network. Um, not that, uh, you know, I would do this or anything, but when you travel and you go to trade shows, um, uh, taking your own wireless router and hooking your up your own to, whoa, I can only, <laughs> no idea why I just did that. Sorry. Um, so uh, yes, I've actually taken a wireless router with me to trade shows and I'll bring my echo devices. I'll bring um, sometimes my Google Chromecast, and as long as it's on the same wireless uh, uh, network, you can use those devices anywhere that you know you want. But if you do move it, just be aware your upstairs bedroom might be your kitchen now. Right. <laughs> so, 
Um, two other sort of gadgets that, that my wife and I just started playing with. Um, we got the Roomba. I mentioned that earlier. Um, vacuum, which so I can just tell it to start vacuuming and it will do so. If I do that right now, uh, I'm pretty sure she will be very surprised because we're in different rooms and if I just tell, but I could start the vacuum from work and it will start running while I'm not even here um, and things like that. So that's one neat device. Uh, one that's a little bit less impressive, but I guess it's something. Um, we got a refrigerator that's supposed to be a smart refrigerator. Um, all I can really tell that I can do with it is set the temperature for the refrigerator and freezer. Um, and that's really just about it. I can see the status of the water filter. Um, that's nice. I mean, that brings accessibility to something that on a t traditional fridge, uh, if you're totally blind, you have no access to. So that's one of the really nice features um, that some of these smart devices give us with that aren't even maybe intended by the manufacturer is accessibility through um, the accessibility built into your phone. Um, I like that a whole lot. So we've talked a bit about all the different pieces, but some really neat stuff can happen if you put it all together. Um, but it gets a little bit complicated. Um, I'd like for Aaron to tell us a little bit about just sort of what, what you could do and what might be involved to try to um, put some of these pieces together to, to do more than one thing. Absolutely. Thank you, Thomas. So imagine you're three o'clock. It's get off at 3.30. You think, hmm, about time to head out. Go to your phone, say, hey, lady, it's three o'clock. And that's your code word for start the relax routine. Your AC will bump down to a nice temperature. And your Instant Pot can start to start its routine. And your coffee maker, your Keurig, will start to brew you a nice espresso for the night. When you come home, you will have your checking in when you're on the bus. You can hear a knock at the door on your sensor, and you can check from your phone if there's anyone there, if there's a package there, and they've left a package for you. And you can set up these routines. For example, the three o'clock routine, you can set that up a bit like, if you're technically minded, you can set it up like a shortcut or a small computer program. You can have them chained to each other if this, then that. And it's very exciting some of the things you can do. When the temperature, when the uh, thermostat hits this temperature, start this other process, which will start this other process. And it's just, they work so well together. And once you get all the technical things set up, then you'll be able to do these. It, it doesn't take long for your mind to just come up with these ideas. Hey, would this be nice? Of course, I'll put this in the list. And then you'll find yourself up for an hour orchestrating all of the different steps or what order you'd like to put them in and how long it would take. It's almost like a recipe for relaxation. And it's very fun to do with all these devices together. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of potential to, um, to do neat tricks. Um, some of them may be more like party tricks. Um, you can set it so that whenever whenever maybe the refrigerator door is opened for the first time, the, uh, the Margaritaville starts playing on the speaker and the uh, light bulbs change their hue to a, to a, I don't know, a different, like a, a blue color or a red color or whatever you might like, or they start to blink, <laughs> whatever your, your sort of uh, mind can dream up. And Aaron it said that there, it's a little bit like programming, but um, you don't actually have to write any code. Uh, it's in the, um, I know in the Amazon Alexa app, you can set up routines and you just do it all by um, 
tapping uh, different different options on the phone screen. So you say, what are the conditions? Well, it's got to be three o'clock, or the temperature has to be seventy-eight, or um, the living room light has to be on. And then what happens when that condition is met? Well, maybe that if the temperature is 78, uh, that means that it is summer. And so I want to um, turn on the pool pump so the pool is ready to swim in, something like that. I don't have all these devices, so I can't make all this magic happen. Um, but a few of them, like having music playing when I get home, um, having the lights turn themselves on and off in a sort of um, pattern that, that looks like someone's there when I'm on vacation. Those are nice features to have. Um, takes a little work, but it's, it's pretty fun. Um, the, so does anybody else have any questions or thoughts, um, ideas for other webinars, questions that maybe we didn't answer in previous webinars? We just kind of want to open up the floor to any topics um, that might be of interest to you, or if anybody on the panel has um, other things that we haven't already covered today, um, I feel will free say to this: speak up. if you can imagine it, it it is out there. Out of curiosity, I just looked up smart shower heads for some reason, and oh yes, it's if you can think about it, it's it's out there. Um, I want to hop in here just real quick too. Uh, one ecosystem we did not talk about, and it kind of surprises me that me of all people did not, is uh, Samsung is building its own ecosystem. I believe it's called Smart Things, and oh, yeah. I actually have I some Bixby that. routines uh, set up on my phone. So if I put my phone on the charger, it sets it to vibrate uh, for the night, so I don't get waken up by a uh, you know phone call. Puts do not disturb on. Well, when I take it off in the morning, now it gives me my morning news and, and it, you can set up all kinds of things. Samsung, you can also set up, if you have your different uh, uh, devices hooked into your smart things, if it's Samsung compatible, you can actually set up Bixby routines and control all of, all of that from your phone as well. To add what, Taryn, I gotta, I gotta tell another story. Yeah, I got another story. <laughs> CES 2020, Aaron and I were there, Aaron was there, and I know he's probably gonna be laughing at this. So we're in one of the sections for one of the countries, and they saw Aaron and I, who have our, we have our canes, our, our mobility canes, and this gal says, hey, come here, I wanna show you something. So I said, okay, okay what, do you, what do you got for me? She looks at me and she's like, check this out. It's a bidet that's automated, and it has braille on the, on the buttons. Yep. I'm not kidding you. If you can imagine it, it's probably out there. I have to say, I'm pretty sure I don't want to hit the wrong button on the bidet. <laughs> I think I want to make sure that the button I'm hitting is absolutely the right one. Absolutely. And what if Mike, do, oh, sorry, go ahead. I just say, I know Mike's probably laughing at me because he knows stuff like this always happens to me. So he's probably sitting there laughing. <laughs> <laughs> One neat, one one trick I kind of like. Dan mentioned it that you can use the Echo as an inter, intercom to, or the Google as an intercom to talk to every room in the house. Um, but you can also drop in on one of your Echo devices um, from any other Echo or from your phone. Um, so that's kind of nice if. I think if I know somebody might be at, at my house at a certain time, maybe if I have somebody, um, I don't actually, but if I have somebody who cleans my house when I'm away, or if um, I'm, I've had somebody come over to do some kind of work that I can't, and I can't be there while they're in the house, I can um, drop in on any room that has an echo in it and hear what's happening there. Uh, for me, it's kind of the equivalent to um, being able to check a camera, you hear about nanny cameras and so forth to, to check on your kids. Uh, as a blind person, being able to do that with audio is about as, as close as I can get. Uh, let me show you that and probably annoy my wife. Let's see how that works. Alexa, drop in on Thomas's second echo. Okay, dropping in.
Hey, Heather, are you there? She's not there. Ooh. Or she's ignoring me. That's distinctly possible as well. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> if anything was happening in the living room, we would hear it. Um, I've, I've seen that demonstrated because I've dropped in on the living room speaker and heard uh, music that was happening at my neighbors <laughs> and other things like that. So um, drop in is something I have a lot of fun with. Um, yeah, you dropped to, in on the cat sitter one time. <laughs> I, I did. Yes. <laughs> as soon as I know that somebody has unlocked the opened the door because the alarm tells me, then I know I can drop in in the living room and see who's there. <laughs> so that's kind of a, you can be a little bit of your own alarm monitoring company. Well, that's a, that's a nice feature. Well, it sounds like we don't have uh, too much in the way of questions or comments. Um, I'd really like to hear anybody's thoughts on other topics that we might cover. Um, one, I spoke to um, an O&M instructor from the School for the Blind about earlier today that may be of interest is um, GPS apps and, and yeah. sort of the blindness specific GPS apps that are out there and the accessibility of um, of the mainstream, such as the Maps apps, and then finally, um, how you can how you can safely use visual assistance apps while you're traveling, uh, which means don't <laughs> don't overdo it. But I think that's a topic. At least, unless somebody has another idea, that's something I would like to consider for a future webinar Ex exactly uh blind square is one of my favorites mm -hmm. um so i think that unless somebody emails me or or speaks up with another idea i'd i'd like to do gps apps coming up um we had discussed doing something around the apple event there we go. Soundscapes by Microsoft is a cool travel app. It actually lets you sort of hear the world around you as kind of a beacon or, or using beacons. So that's a lot of fun. We can show that out. That one's hard to show off because you really need stereo audio um, that sort of follows as you turn your body and your phone. Um, but Soundscapes is, is really fun and, and useful. So that's kind of my, my thinking of where we're going to go from here is talking about travel and GPS and other tools um, that technology makes available to help with travel. Um, seems like things have quieted down a little bit. So I think I will, unless anybody wants to speak up, we'll go ahead and wrap up a few minutes early. We won't get to hear my alarm at 730, but that's how it goes. Um, anybody else on the panel have anything to chime in before we wrap up? I don't think so. All right. Well, thank you guys for for being here to present this information. Thank you, Michael, for getting draft, letting yourself be drafted as a uh, presenter, even though you didn't know about it. Um, and thank you to Northwest Hills. I care um, for her, for sort of sp sponsoring for providing us with um, your the, your contact list and people to um, to present to, and of course thank you to the Austin Lighthouse um, for giving us the resources and opportunity to take advantage of a lot of these smart devices as well as put on these webinars for everybody and. Thank you for the happy birthday wishes. I do appreciate that. Um, with that, I think we will go ahead and wrap up. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please let me know by email to thomas.stivers at austinlighthouse.org. Um, or you can visit our website. There's a, a, a contact form there that you can uh, put any, any remarks on. I'm steadily working on improving your experience when you go to the Austin Lighthouse website to look at one of these webinar pages. 
Uh, right now we've got handout, the handout up before the webinar, which was a big step in the right direction. I'm hoping we'll have the video up very soon, um, shortly after this webinar. And you can see all of our previous uh, seven webinars and their handouts and recordings and so forth um, at the Austin Lighthouse website. Uh, so please check it out. And we hope to hear, uh, hear from you soon. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks with what I think will be a presentation about uh, orientation and mobility and devices that can help with it. Everybody have a great evening. Bye-bye. Take care.